So, uh, you ever worried about your cell phone causing brain cancer? Uh, yeah, that topic's come up several times, actually even a couple of decades ago. And I have to admit, I was always a skeptic about it. But some information has come out from a couple of very large studies um, done by the NIH Toxicology Program. And sure enough, there is risk. The, uh, it was picked up and reported by the, both the New York Times, Scientific American, and a lot of other uh, media outlets. New science, uh, uh, or new studies, link uh, cell phone radiation with cancer. Now, what were the studies and what did they indicate? <clears throat> I won't go into too much detail on it. Um, other than to say there were two studies. They were very, very large. Uh, they looked, one looked at rats, one look at, looked at mice. And uh, sure enough, they did find some types of tumors. Um, gliomas of the brain. They also found some uh, tumors, schwannomas, in the heart. Uh, they found some other things as well. Now, <clears throat> how big was the risk? Uh, not very. So, uh, short, the short version is I'm not planning on giving up my cell phone, but actually I'll editorialize a little bit later. Uh, part of the interesting thing about this is it's, it's non-ionizing radiation. Um, what does that mean? We all know that the sun can cause skin damage, but it's because of the ionization of the sun. It actually can knock um, uh, parts of the molecule in the DNA um, off of the rest of the molecule. Uh, cell phones, so far as we know, only create what we call non-ionizing uh, radiation, which is just heat. So that's one of the reasons, one of the biological rationales that a lot of us tended to be skeptical about uh, significant risks um, in the past. Now, um, <clears throat> the study dose was, uh, what, uh, 1.53 or 6 watts of radiation per kilogram. Uh, the length of exposure was about two years, which was the lifespan of the, uh, of the lab rat. Um, <clears throat> why have we not seen this already? Well, a couple of things. Number one, uh, like we've said already, the risk appears to be fairly small. And number two, these types of cells, the schwannomas, I mean the schwann cells, the gli glial cells, brain cells grow very, very slowly. Um, so there's not um, you're not going to see as, as um, higher rates of cancer in cells that grow slowly like you would with uh, skin cancer. Skin has to replace itself quite a lot. Uh, can, uh, cells within the colon have to replace themselves. They're high turnover. So again, you see skin and colon cancer much more often than, than brain cancer or um, cancers from uh, in the heart. Um, <clears throat> the, the study was reviewed by a panel of experts in a three-day meeting on March 28th, and they said, yep, there is clear evidence. There's um, uh, no, no doubt that uh, there's some risk there. Um, Again, so from that point, you get into um, some discussion, history. Uh, in 2011, uh, radiation was classified as a group two or possible human carcinogen by the International Agency on uh, Cancer Research, IARC, uh, of the World Health Organization. And again, so there is some risk. Uh, what I personally think about it as a doc who studies risk and manages it. Um, yeah, there's risk. I mean, we, we deal with, we live in a world of risk. Uh, we debate r how to manage risk on a regular basis. The most recent uh, really emotional political debates have to do with the risk of, um, of guns, uh, guns in schools. Uh, huge debate around that. We've had debate around how to manage risks of uh, head injury on motorcycles. 
One debate that I personally find interesting that we've never had is the debate about highway uh, crashes, not on not um, motorcycles, but uh, the vast majority of our population rides on the highway in cars. And guess what the uh, guess what the number one cause of death has uh, has been associated with cars. Uh, head injury, so uh, very preventable um, with use of helmets. So at least that it, it, we knew that thirty years ago, but it was n there was never a debate about whether we wore helmets in cars. So again, yes, we live in a world of risk. Um, how we manage it can uh, often become a very hot political topic. It's also a personal issue as well. <clears throat> Um, in fact, when you look at the, the details on this channel, it's video after video after video of risks associated with our genetics, our lifestyle, um, what we eat, how we move, how we sleep, uh, and how to manage those risks. So, yeah, we've got another one, and it now has to do with our cell phones. Thank you for your attention.